Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where, really, yeah, what are we, two old guys talk about old games. That's your constant, two old guys. That's our constant, mm-hmm. yeah. Because if I say we don't, we don't really play stuff off yeah. IGN's Top 100 Super Nintendo games anymore. I can't yeah. really say that. Any, any, welcome to a show where any number of people talk about things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Since it's Other Ship Monday, and we talk about anything that's mm-hmm. not about that list, and that's we're not doing that list. Yeah. We're, well, we'd really talk about games. And today, two old guys have brought on Tadpog's sweetheart couple mm-hmm. yet again, Nosh, Josh and Nicole Nance. Because we love their company so much, and we just always want them to be on. Thanks, guys. It's true. If you don't know them, they're very lovely people. Thank you. Very lovely people. But it's Other Ship Monday. We've got a huge backlog of calls. So we've, I asked Dave's like, can we do an all-call-in show? And Dave's like, yeah, okay. Sounds good. All right. So that's that's what we're doing today. <laughs> with that, with that enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds easy. <laughs> but first, I'm your bearded host, Tyler. And I thought it would be a good topic since it had the four of us here. I think I've briefly touched on this before. Please be a personality quiz. (laughs) (laughs) I do have a survey to take, but first, excellent about uh, cutesy things that you've done as a couple or with somebody you've ever dated. Because everybody, I feel like most people, no matter how like serious of a person you are, you will develop eventually. If you genuinely genuinely care about someone, you'll develop some sort of a, a quirk that you guys run with some kind of couple behavior or something. Okay. Whether it be what you call each other or things that you yeah. do together. Nicole's face reflects my feelings right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're just over there frowning. <laughs> so you're making it sound like I've never truly cared about anyone. <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> you, you're very dark. You're very dark. Dark Dickinson. D- dark yeah, Emily Dickinson. I'm, now I'm searching my memories to see if we do any cutesy uh, stuff together. I think I don't so. Know. Uh. Delicious. Josh and Nicole learn something uh, insightful about their relationship. <laughs> I always think it's cute when you guys have sex. There's that. <laughs> Cute's how I describe it, too. <laughs> Remember, my, my obnoxious behavior, the first one that I think I've talked about briefly, was with my high school girlfriend. I love you more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my friends got sick of this shit quick. <laughs> and where before we get off the phone, uh, like I would say, I love you. And she would say, I love you more. And I would say, I love you more. More, 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 until it was just like one of us knew it was time to stop and would just go, I win. And the other person would go, Grr. <laughs> and we Wait, did this. Why, Grr? Because you're, upset Cause you're mad you the other person won. Yeah. Okay. How, but how did you say it? Just like that? It was like, I love you. I love you more. More, more, more. I win. Grr. No. <laughs> no, it went on much longer. <laughs> Sometimes much it went. longer. Uh, no, there were there were times because uh, can we please call her right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, back in high school, we hung out at Tyler's house a lot. Whenever he uh, he lived in this house, he pretty much had the whole basement to himself. So yeah, that's it was like we, a whole other floor. We for would us. go. Was pretty, was so nice. yeah, he would. We would all go over there after uh, after school a lot and be hanging out. And of course, he had to as soon as he got home, he had to call his girlfriend. And they would be on the phone for like two hours. So really, it was just he would he would just be grinding away at Diablo two, and talking on the phone with her and yeah, mandatory and be, like four hours a day phone time. Right, and so we would all be hanging out and playing games or something else. Uh, and Tyler would be over there in the corner uh, playing Diablo and talking to his girlfriend. But yeah, it went on for like half an hour sometime. <laughs> it would just be I love you more, girl. <laughs> 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 It's pretty. It's pretty awful. It's pretty awful. Yeah. We still make. What are you gonna do? That's that was over like twelve years ago. Twelve plus years ago. Mm-hmm. No, no, it was like it's more like thirty now, and I think we were <laughs> thirty years ago. <laughs> I think it was like it was closer to fifteen years ago. Yeah, yeah. 
But then there was another girl I dated to where our thing was we would always try to tell each other at the first of the day, say, it's whatever day of the week, I love you. Oh, that's sweet. So that was, it was always at the contest, like at midnight to say that to each other or we forget when we would talk in the morning or whatever to say that first thing off. Were you learning the days of the week at the time? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And like, I remember one time she was like, I'm going to amp this up and make it super real and make you sad. It was like, what? Well, I'm pregnant. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday. I'm pregnant. <laughs> uh, she's like, even when you die, I'll go to your grave and I'll say that every day. I was like, that's, right. that's sweet. That's, that's yeah, sweet. that is sweet. Oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure. I'm gonna, Josh, like, I want if you, to do that. If, you die, if, if I outlive you, I'm going to make sure she does that. <laughs> okay, thank I'm you. I'm going to go visit your grave every day and just watch. <laughs> <laughs> you just text her, it's Tuesday. You know what you have to do today, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you. And then my <laughs> you quit your job just to, just to run surveillance on this poor woman. <laughs> I want you to dress like the guy at the end of time in Chrono Trigger, just all in black with a bowler, and you're just sitting by my grave or you're in her window. Just, li- <laughs> <laughs> just standing up, snoozing. Just- <laughs> Not you're, bubble. You're by, by my grave, when she comes up, you wake up with a start. You made a promise, miss. <laughs> but then Meg and I, what we do is in lieu of calling each other honey, baby, etc. We only say we always say bear. Mm-hmm. We're various types of bears. She's been calling you bro a lot recently. Too. Yeah, that's that started during Double Dragon Neon, <laughs> right. and then just stuck. <laughs> it became oh, it's this is kind of a douchey thing to say. Oh yeah, bro. And then you just get into it. That, that she bro, can't bro stop. Them sticks. <laughs> can't stop. <laughs> so I got unless you want to take a survey. Or yeah. do, do a survey after everybody tells stories. Um, is the survey about this? No. Or is the survey completely It's unrelated? about sex. So it's oh, okay, tangentially related. All right. Well, then let me rush through this. <laughs> uh, what's up, Internet? I'm Dave. I'm your bespectacled host. And I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Blood Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> um. Phil has graciously uh, agreed to start a Blood Bowl League because this is a game that uh, Wiley and Laura told me about uh, last Dragon Con or a couple Dragon Cons ago. It's like a board game that was made into a PC game. And I got it, and I've been playing a lot of it. I joined Wiley's League, and man, that game is a lot of fun. It's really, really, really a fun game. So I asked Phil, I was like, Hey, man, how difficult do you think it would be to set up a Tadpog League? Because a couple of people have been talking about now that football's over, we don't have fantasy football, what the fuck are we going to do? And we're going to start a, a Blood Bowl League. Tyler, this is a game that I would love for you to play. I think you will absolutely hate it. Yeah, that's that's why I haven't <laughs> you said will, I would play abs- at all. Yeah. I don't think I, I, think think I, think I would hate it. I think you would absolutely <laughs> hate it. Um the first time I played it, I thought of you because I was like, man, there is no fucking way. To, like if Tyler like starts this game, he's just going to be like, I wasted my money. <laughs> but I still, I think it'd be awesome if you played. <laughs> so, so, I mean, who knows? You might, you might completely surprise everybody and, and win the league. The reason I bring it up is because um, the league is filling up. Phil wants to have 14 people. And uh, he just tweeted that we're like 33% full and we haven't even mentioned it on the show yet. So I wanted to mention it so that if there's anybody out there who is interested in it uh, in joining the Blood Bowl League, first of all, Google or search on YouTube for like Blood Bowl League videos or Blood Bowl Chaos Edition videos. And like you'll probably get an idea whether or not it's something you want to do because it's like I like watching six hours of videos over the course of a day to learn how to play a game. (laughs) To me, that's a lot of fun, but to a lot of people, that's not fun at all. Um, but if you watch, if you, if you get a taste of it and you're like, yeah, this seems like it might be something I'm into, um, email Phil, email Phil at tadpog blood bowl league at gmail.com. Um, I'm sorry that is incorrect, but Phil, could you please Create a second Gmail address that is that in case anyone emails you at that address. <laughs> it is actually tadpogbloodbowl at gmail.com uh, and let them know that you want in. I just wanted to talk about that instead of doing a funny intro story. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I don't have an intro story. Do you want to play Bud Bowl? 
Football, uh, Josh? Maybe. Let me watch like six hours of videos first. <laughs> no, that's just to learn the rules. You can watch like an hour to get an idea of whether okay, or not it's okay. something. It's one of those games where it's like everything you do. It's football, but it's like in the – I didn't even sell the fucking thing. It's like football, but set like in Warhammer universe. So it's like – ogres playing wood elves and, and shit like that. Well, of course the ogres are going to win in football. You'd think so. You would think so because the ogres, you'll, you'll, Josh, you'll find this out when you watch an hour long video. Uh, the ogres are a bashy team. So they're, they're more about less about scoring and more about just maiming the other team. Well, like the wood elves, they're a scoring team. So they're all about like dodging and actually making touchdowns and hmm. stuff like that. I think, um, out of everybody at the table, I, I was, when I was driving over here to record, I was thinking, I'm going to talk about Blood Bowl in like zero to one people at the table um, besides me is going to be interested. And I was like, maybe Josh. I said, maybe Nicole. But unfortunately, it's fucking, they don't have a Mac client. So I was like, Nicole's oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I knew Tyler was out <laughs> just based on the game. And I was so, like, maybe Josh. <laughs> so somebody who doesn't understand football, how much of a chance do they have? Dave won fantasy football. You don't have to know anything about yeah, football to know. play anything football related. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to know anything. Um, all the, really, the only thing you need to know is to score points, you make touchdowns, which means you need to get the ball there. That's pretty much all I need to know about football. Okay. But it's like, I'm, I may be interested in this. Okay. Well, maybe I, you should maybe email Tadpog. I, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one. Either one, either one. Phil just set up a second one. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those games where it's like everything you do, it's super fun, but it's also completely frustrating because it's like every, everything you do is a check. Like in D&D, everything's a fucking skill check. Like if you try to pick up the ball and uh, it makes a skill check, it tests your agility. And if you fail it, you just fumble the ball and it's the next, next team's turn. It's cool. It's cool. You'd like it. What, Nicole? What about Josh's what? chair? No, he's moving my chair. Josh, don't move our chair. I won't. Hands to, your, <laughs> hands to yourself <laughs> in, the, in, in the annex. I'm trying to think of cutesy couple behaviors that you guys have or what you've had with I don't think we have Josh. any. Cause... You had an ex-girlfriend whose cutesy thing was to just always say negative things constantly. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's not cute. <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like what were some of the things? At specifics, I don't know, but did you have you talked about this on the the show before? How you you were hanging out with us one night and you just kept listing? No, of, I don't think I have. You made tally marks of uh, every time she said something bitchy, she just yeah. At one point, I was <laughs> done with Josh's relationship and I wanted it to be over. You wanted to quantify it, <laughs> so I was like, I noticed like she was just like every time I'd hang out with the two of them, that she was getting increasingly just negative and shitty. So I was like, for one hour while we hang out. I'm just going to make a tally mark every time she says something negative or or just shitty. And I think after an hour, I think I had like 78 tally marks. So like in in (laughs) more times than once a minute for that whole hour, she just said something snide, shitty, bad. It was very endearing. (laughs) Well, this reveals something about me too, because Tyler, I knew you were taking those tallies. And instead of me being like, maybe we need to help Josh out. And like, let them know what's going on. Instead, I was like, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like afterward, I'm going to like show Josh, be like, this is how bad your girlfriend is. <laughs> so yeah, that it wasn't Nicole. <laughs> you don't keep any secret yeah. tallies about me, do you? Oh, we do. It's just not mm. about that. No, I, mm. I like you right now. If I don't like you, then I turn in all this homework I've done, Josh. <laughs> the Nicole file. <laughs> It's very thick. <laughs> Nicole, anything? Stories? Um, yes, actually. Yeah. I'm awesome. Gonna, I'm going to tell a story. You um, lied. You said you didn't have any stories. I think you said that on one of the I'm going to put a tally mark yeah. for every time Nicole lies. Yeah, I think it's cute when you <laughs> lie, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> um, the very first time that I drank alcohol, I was living in the dorms at Murray State. Mm-hmm. And you're not supposed to drink in the dorms. Or when you're under 21, but or when go, you're on, go on. <laughs> I, I knew the latter law. The first one, I don't guess anyone ever told me you're not allowed to drink in the dorms. I just assumed it was. There's a lot of you things you're not supposed to do in the dorms. <laughs> you're not allowed to drink in the dorms. Um, light fires, Zach. You're not supposed to light fires in the dorms, Zach. <laughs> So my friends and I, all throughout high school, were pretty straight edge. We didn't do any of that stuff. Um, so whenever we were at college, the first time that we drank, we had a friend who came to visit us that was not going to Murray State. And to celebrate, we decided we were going to drink. So it was an interesting night. But um, 
at the end of the night, our friend had gotten pretty belligerent and he was going from our room to someone else's room. And people you didn't know? No, someone that we didn't know on a different floor. Mm. But eventually we had like the campus police show up at our door. <laughs> and so that kind of freaked us out. And then, you know, long story short, the next day we had this long night of drinking the night before. And we had all of these alcohol bottles in our dorm room. Mm-hmm. And you're not supposed to drink in the dorms. And so we didn't know what to do to how to get rid of these things because we thought if we threw them away, someone was going to find them. They were going to know. They were going to know that this trash was from our room somehow. And right. you'd written your room number on every bottle. <laughs> so. <laughs> so we were just, we had no idea what to do. So what we did, our genius plan, was we got um, my roommate's suitcase. <laughs> I love it. This is cute. This is, this is really cute. Okay. You got a suitcase. And we filled the suitcase with all the liquor bottles. <laughs> all the alcohol bottles. And then we went on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> then we took it and we drove it out somewhere to like some random business parking lot that had a dumpster in uh-huh. it and emptied her suitcase into the dumpster. <laughs> The whole time you did it, like, was it you and your friend, like, in a giant trench coat? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm, I'm actually picturing a, a briefcase. And, like, they're, they're like, in, in business attire. And no, and the thing was the we even, on. like, knew that we were going down the elevator and out the door of the dorm, that they were going to hear the bottles jingling in the suitcase. So we had to, like, put clothes in there, too. So they wouldn't <laughs> Were you, like, loudly announcing, like, goodbye, we're going on vacation for the day. <laughs> Don't anyone worry about this suitcase. We've packed a lunch. It'll be quite delicious. <laughs> That's a pretty big suitcase. Oh, uh, we're very hungry. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, it's like Nicole, like, sweating and, like, slowly carrying the suitcase <laughs> we didn't drink last night. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was pretty interesting. Also, since it was the first time that I had ever had alcohol, I drank like. What uh, was it? What was your first alcohol? It was like one drink? of those Smirnoff watermelon wine cooler things. <laughs> mm-hmm. I had like half of one and just puked my guts out. <laughs> yeah. So. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to sneeze and fit over here. Anyway, I thought of the way over here about us with our bottles <laughs> going out in our suitcase. <laughs> You get bubble wrap, and we'll wrap every <laughs> bottle individually. Put them in the suitcase. How do we get bubble wrap? Can you buy it? No, you have to. You have to we'll just order a bunch of things off Amazon, and then we we'll use that bubble wrap. But we can't have it shipped here. God, what are we gonna do? It was, and it's so it's such a testament to how quickly you get jaded in college. Because like from that time to the time a year and a half later, when I moved out of the dorms, like at that point we had empty vodka bottles lining our room on top of every light fixture in the room. <laughs> with empty vodka bottles. Just furniture made out of vodka <laughs> bottles, vodka <laughs> bottles and pizza boxes. <laughs> that was what Jacob and I, we lived together. I had an apartment my freshman year, but that was the second apartment we looked at. The first apartment we had like signed on to get it. We were going to move into this one apartment, uh, like just down the road from our other one. And the guy said, I'll clean it up. I'll have it all ready at this date or whatever. When we showed up with moving bands, everything ready to move in, the guy hadn't touched it. It was still filthy from the last people that lived in it. And I think what really turned my parents off is like he walked in and they had still had shelves built into every single room. And it was just like Jack Daniels and Crown Royal bottles and mm-hmm. beer cans, just like all lining these shelves over the, all over every room. Yeah. And, like, to my dad, it was, like, the same thing if he'd walk in and seen, like, a unholy, scene. unholy symbols <laughs> and things like that. And he's yeah. like, oh, my God, you cannot live here. He was rebuked. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He immediately just went up the road to another apartment complex and went to somebody's door and was like, do you have anything? I need. To, I want my son to live here. He's a good Christian boy. Well, we certainly do. <laughs> There's a crucifix. The next day we moved in. <laughs> There's a crucifix on the wall and like, a ba- <laughs> I don't know why a Baptist hymnal there too. Why not? <laughs> the name of the complex was, to be fair, it was Good Christian Boy Home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And by call us? Nope. I don't know why. I don't know why we decided to do this. We have zero calls. I thought, I thought we were having a survey. Oh yeah, sexual survey. You're right. Way to be on top of things. Nikki's going to be I'm really a, I'm gonna erase. Ridiculous. I'm going to erase one tally mark. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So on our sex, they had a, a sort of a sexual taste between men and women about what they're into, a big survey. Okay. So I took the survey and decided... I should ask all of us and see if this is what, see if how much we're into and if we fit into the majority minority. <laughs> if we're sexually normal okay. or 
This I, is I need tough, to know man. when I try to seduce every one of you what you're going to be into. Because <laughs> this is from the sex subreddit. I guarantee you that, like, normal, like, there are different <laughs> definitions of normal. I love that subreddit, but, like, they're pretty, they're pretty, they're pretty wild and crazy on our sex. <laughs> The, the question of the survey is, do you get sexually aroused by the idea of blank? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Uh-huh. I'm half hard right now. <laughs> All right, so do you get sexually aroused? Dave, we'll start with you. Oh, and I'll, and I'll yes. Go. Okay. Sexually aroused by the idea of Dave. Dave, yes. do you get sexually aroused by the idea of group sex? Like me in it or just the <laughs> idea of it? The survey just says idea of it. Oh, then yeah. Yeah. What about participating in it? Mm, I mean, like in what fashion? Like handing out drinks? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh man, it looks like you've really been fucking hard. Would you like a soda? You, you hand out wet towels. And, oh boy, and let me wipe that up for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me watch, like, Mister. Like the ball boy in tennis, you just dash across the orgy room, clean something up, and run back to the other side. Oh, oh shit, they dropped a the condom. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it depends on, on the what. I guess it depends on my role. What's my role? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll play. I'll play sex orgy ball boy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and who's in it? That's also like a factor. Like this is so wide open. This is like the Grand Theft Auto of questions. It's just like, well, I mean, what kind of what kind of group sex is it? Is it like octogenarians? Well, I'm probably not gonna be joining that one. <laughs> They get pretty wild, man. No one's getting pregnant. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's what I mean. They're getting too wild. <laughs> Josh, do you get sexually aroused with the idea of group sex? Uh, yeah, I guess so. It's pr- probably not my first choice. Mm-hmm. Not my go-to thing. What yeah. would What would your first choice be? Well, I don't know. Let's see if it comes up. <laughs> <laughs> the survey's not over yet, bro. Uh, uh, girls. Yep, that's it. That's the Nailed one. It. <laughs> Nicole, are you sexually aroused with the idea of group sex? I think that it depends on my mood. So if you're aroused, by, so if I just you be aroused by it when you're aroused by it, but not aroused by it when you're not aroused. By it. <laughs> Girl sexuality is very complicated. Mm, mm, okay, I think that's a cop out. <laughs> because sixty-five percent of men were aroused by group sex, and fifty-five percent of women were. I think it's one of those things where the thought of it. It's probably arousing, but if you were ever like... In the moment? At the moment, yeah. it would be like panic. I don't think it would be panic <laughs> no, for me. Panic it would just be me. like, this room smells so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like, dude, why is it your dick hard? <laughs> Man, this room smells so bad, guys. <laughs> like, Perfume boy's not doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm over here running all these condoms, and this guy's fucking watching the sex. Come on, perfume boy. <laughs> Where's our CK1 boy? Where is he? <laughs> but I am... I am I'm very into the idea of group the idea of group sex, so I fit in the sixty five percent. Are you I mean, is this why you asked Josh and Nicole to be on the show? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Nicole may or may not be joining us. Uh, I'm very into the idea. Tyler flips a switch and all the doors lock. <laughs> all right, Dave. Yes, Tyler. Do you get sexually aroused by the idea of performing sexual acts with a friend? So it seems like I'm really sick today. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, so my group sex and like a friend, are you guys into this? What the fuck kind of quiz is this, man? Look, uh, our friendship. I guess I guess this is fuck, this is fuck buddies yeah. as opposed to being in a relationship. Tyler, our friendship is so <laughs> special to me. It's so special to me that I don't ever want anything to come between us, especially not in sex. Are you so, roused for the idea of a handsome boy, Dave? <laughs> I think you're very handsome. It's just I don't want to destroy this friendship. <laughs> oh shit. Um Man, I don't want to sound like not sex positive, but no, not really. I mean, mm-hmm. other than like I'm just going to go no. I don't no. I don't have to explain myself. Just no. no. You don't have to. <laughs> Josh. So we're defining this as a fuck buddy. I believe this is yeah, just like having a friend with okay, benefits. Okay. Can I can I go back? Can we can I take a step back? Mhm. Mhm. I feel like that is something that I would be into if I were not currently in a committed relationship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go with, yeah, uh, Nicole and I were fuck buddies for a while. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've had a couple fuck buddies before. <laughs> so. I was about to say, like, well, I guess when you were broken up, but yeah. mm-hmm. you, were still, you were still into each other, so it's like you were just friends with benefits. 
You were for, you were dating without labels. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean. I've had I've had a genuine fuck buddy before, and I mean I feel like that was kind of nice because then you didn't there wasn't like you didn't feel like you had any kind of obligation to that person, mm-hmm. I guess. So I have as well, so I'm into it. I'm 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 fine with that, and it um sixty five percent of men and thirty six percent of women hmm. are into that. Only sixty five percent of men. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised. The same yeah. as the same as group sex. I I'm not surprised uh, that only that many women are, but yeah, I am. I'm more surprised about the the low number, relatively, I guess. Of Tyler, women. I thought you were a good Christian boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just means I didn't drink or do drugs. <laughs> you gotta have you get you get to have one of the you three. Get pick one. And still be a good Christian yeah. boy. Okay. <laughs> two and, two or three of the three. No, you're out. And you have you have anal sex before you have vaginal sex. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, all right. You yep. yep. So you're still a virgin. still a virgin. Yes. All right, Dave. Yes, Tyler. Do you get sexually aroused by oh, the man. idea of having sex with someone who is at least 10 years older? Not any more than I get aroused thinking about having sex with anybody. So I'll say no. I mean, like, it does, like the age the age isn't a thing for me. We'll mm-hmm. just say that. I mean, I, I don't think the age, the age doesn't really matter. Like, I feel like someone can be really attractive at 50, um, and then you take another 50-year-old, and she is really not attractive. And, and I think it skews... Unfortunately, I think it skews the other way, younger, because it's like, I think, like when I look at a girl who's younger, I will often say, man, when I was her age, I wouldn't be attracted to her at all. (laughs) (laughs) I'd have been like, eh, nah, I don't think so. But now, look, and it's like, okay, well, you know, pretty cute. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say no, solid no. Okay. Josh? Yeah, I'm going to agree with Dave. I'm not really sure how to answer it. I guess no. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'd I'd be attracted to an attractive, it'd be forty one year old. So I'd be so yes, I would be attracted to an attractive forty one year old. But uh, I mean, age, not uh, yeah, age, yeah, it's not age, an age isn't thing, right? yeah, yeah, really an issue. Yeah, like I I need my I need my poon aged at least forty years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good good, good <laughs> term for it. That was a <laughs> weird statement. <laughs> What what movie did we watch? I haven't so, heard you say poon. Yeah, I, we watched something the other day that was, was uh, poon hounds. They, yeah. they were talking about poon hounds. It was oh, God. indecent proposal. Yes, that's such a. Poon See, hound. I just said poon because the other day, like a girl from seminary had commented about how y'all my poon hurts. <laughs> <laughs> that all the female saints are all usually referred to as like the virgin, but there are no. Male the Virgin Saints, and I I responded like I need to know all my male saints are just pulling down poon left and right. So, <laughs> did that so get poon a, is just in yeah. my head rolling around. <laughs> did, right that get a, did that get a good she result? She liked it. So, so there you go. Now it's in your vernacular. I think you should bring it back. I feel like that word died the out. The resurgence of poon. <laughs> <laughs> the resurgence of poon. That's the third chapter in my book. Hashtag Team Poon. <laughs> Nicole. Take um, someone ten years or older. I think that not specifically. No, I don't yeah. feel like. I mean, I'm in the same boat. I guess older people can be attractive, but it's not the age does not turn me on specifically. Uh, I like cougars and milfs, so I'm I'm into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't I mean? I would still want to have sex with all the porn stars I liked when I was like 15, 16 years old. So I mean, milf. I mean, at this point, I feel like. I mean, I'm your wife the one, is the one I guess. <laughs> <laughs> What was Anybody it? think when we were adults, we'd all be a lot taller? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I, I wake up every morning, and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> you mean taller just, than you are now? Just will yourself. Yeah, I just remember adults interest. being be like something different. I don't feel like I look <laughs> like an adult. Yeah, it's weird because it's like, but you do look like an adult, like to to children. I promise. <laughs> look at my hairline; I look like an adult. <laughs> <laughs> like I was thinking about this the other day because it was like um, someone I work with brings her um, two year old into work pretty frequently, and like it was the first time I realized that that kid thinks that I'm an adult, <laughs> and that was really really weird to me. Mm-hmm. And then like when I'm when I'm hanging out with Henry at the house, I'm like, he fuck, he doesn't know right now, but he thinks I'm an adult. He thinks I know what the fuck's going on. I don't. It, <laughs> you just have to pretend, right? You just yes. Pretend. That's what I do. Uh, Dave. Do you well, get- wait, did you give the percentages on that? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Men are about 55%. And women are 45%. Yeah. So kind so of that a, one's closer. Yeah, kind of a wash on that one. 
Dave. Yes, Tyler. Do you get sexually aroused by the idea of BDSM? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, light, I would say. Yeah. I think like I, th- I want. You like, don't want Nikki just to crank your nuts real quick. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I've seen, and I have to say light because like, I feel like as soon as like someone says BDSM, like the first thing they go to is that like fucking gimp suit from American Horror Story. <laughs> I, like, I mean, that's like the first thing people think of. But like, I think that, um, I think of the scene in Secretary when the guy's tied to the stove and she's yeah. throwing tomatoes at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, the that hot is, stuff. That is, that's such a good <laughs> movie, and there's so much, there are so many other better scenes. In that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say solid yes on that yes. one. Yeah, Josh. Uh, yeah. Um, like sort of like Dave. Uh, the the light stuff. The I don't want to say weird, um, right? Like unusual yeah. stuff oh. like the like the tomatoes. I'm into the weird stuff. <laughs> like the- <laughs> Essentially, around the idea of weird stuff. Is that a question? Have we gotten to that one? Yeah. Yet? I, that's a yes for me. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, it, it's yeah, it's kind of hard. I'm not yeah, I'm not into like the like. The car batteries or, yeah, or like, anything like that. There's but, degrees yeah. of severity. Uh-huh. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say I'd say a little bit, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Nicole? I say yes, medium. <laughs> they said yes, light. Light, I mean, light, light medium. <laughs> okay, wait. We need to define this. <laughs> <laughs> What's your idea of medium? Because your idea of medium may be my, like, my idea of light. What's medium? Fucking jocks with like a foot long dildo. <laughs> you know, media. Oh, oh shit. That's Amber level. <laughs> I don't know. What's your idea of light? My, I, I asked, you don't answer questions. Because <laughs> <laughs> she wanted you say she was such a one up. I know. Exactly. Not, I, I love this. You both are squirming trying to like dodge the like, hits. It's like the most fucked up standoff. <laughs> I know Josh said light, and I know what Josh's idea of light is. Josh, what's your idea of light? And so I know that my idea, my arousal level would be a little bit more. So you think he's a pussy. You really want Josh to amp it up. Like, you like light stuff, you're like, I want the medium, Josh. Give me the medium. (laughs) We've got a a problem that we're both on the the same side of this. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't. What's going on? (laughs) Because we had this discussion at D&D one night. Mm Mm-hmm. And you have BDSM, so you have to have an S and you have to have an M. So okay. if you have two S's and two M's, it doesn't really work out very well. Uh-huh. So that's our predicament. Gotcha. I think I don't. What do you think they both are, Dave? Are they both S's or are they both both M's? Um, I think that they're both. I don't think that you're. I can't imagine you both being the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> Because, like, I'm sitting here, like, trying to process that. Like, as you said it, I was just, like, in podcast mode. Just be like, okay, yeah, uh uh-huh, yeah. And then when I, like, actually thought about it, I was like, no, I don't see how. (laughs) I also was surprised that we were the same thing, so. Okay. Well. So, Tadpog Nation, if anybody (laughs) out there. (laughs) You still didn't answer the question is what is, what's medium? What? Uh, what tools <laughs> would you use see, as a medium? See, you're fortunate enough to like have your significant other here where you can look at him to be like, is it okay to answer this question? <laughs> I might need to send a text message here in a minute. <laughs> so uh, what can tools? we, okay, uh, if you're both afraid to answer, why don't you take a piece of paper, <laughs> write no, down, no, write down the tools we, you would use. We, no, because that's way too arousing. <laughs> first, let's get Tyler's answer, and then we can do it. We can say, okay, would you use this? Yes, would you use this? Okay. I hardly have any experience in the area, so I guess I don't really know because me branching into BDSM, the most I've done is uh, one time I wanted to get tied up. Idea of. The idea of. Okay, the idea of. But at the same time, like, I'm so so on the idea of pain Mm -hmm. because I remember one time I got tied up. I asked a girlfriend to tie me up. All we had were the cords my, to my regular Nintendo. So she tied me to a four post <laughs> bed. That's poetry, using, man. Using That's Nintendo. why you get hard every time you see a Nintendo cord. That's fucking poetry. I and one, one time, I mean, I was blindfolded and I asked my girl, my girlfriend to like, let's, let's take this, let's do some real stuff. Like, go ahead, be sexual and mm-hmm. don't be afraid to hurt me a little bit. It's fine. I want to try this. And the next thing I know is just like this searing pain on my chest. So she blindfolded me and then just put matches out on my chest. Not, not really my thing. She went but. straight. To, she could have thrown candle wax or something. Well, because my my example was drow cleric. 
So <laughs> was, was she like, I win. Girl. <laughs> I win. Sizzle. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> so, yeah, I would be up for experimentation, but what I have done with it, uh, so, so. So I'm going to go with, I don't know. I think the thing is with it, to me, what's most interesting isn't really the, it's kind of related, but it's not directly in that BDSM acronym. And that is just the relationship of like sub and dom. Like to Mm -hmm. me, that's like really interesting because it's like, like having, like having a role, I think is, is something that is just, I don't know, having a role is something I've always wanted in all parts of life. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well I go to work and that's my role is to be a graphic designer. So it's, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's, and I feel like my role would be fluid. So like yeah. some days I'd be into one thing, some days I'd be into another thing. Yeah. I don't think I have a strict role when it comes to that. So, but you guys have very strict. Like, nope, we're this is what we do. I mean, I, th- I think it's just stuff we're into and stuff we're not. We don't really. You both have paddles, and on the other side, we're <laughs> just looking at each other. <laughs> And a mask, and a leather mask sitting in the middle. <laughs> Man, you, you guys play weird ping pong. <laughs> so what are the percentages on that? That is, men are at about... Why, Nicole, are you ready to end this conversation? <laughs> men are at 42%, and women are at 61%. Men are at 42? Mm-hmm. That's surprising to me. So I think, And women are at, what, 61? I think Fifty Shades of Grey yeah, is responsible that spiked for, that. for that number. Huh. Had to have. More people need to see the secretary. So, so here's where sh- here's where <laughs> shit starts to get weird. Oh, we're not done. <laughs> Do you get sexually aroused with the idea of performing sexual act with an adolescent, fifteen to nineteen years old? Oh, uh, you had to throw nineteen in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like, what it says. Like, that's Reddit's out. They're like, hey, we're not pedophiles. Don't worry, guys. Uh, 18, 19 year olds are in there too. I mean, no, I don't really get aroused by the thought. It goes back to the age thing. It doesn't. That really doesn't. That's not a turn on or turn off. Yeah, like this is the opposite of the other questions. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna say no, but I mean, don't get me wrong. I will definitely go on the internet and watch a 19 year old fuck a guy. That's I have no problems with that. Yeah, I'm pretty well same as Dave. I I mean, uh, it's kind of a it's it's a different question for Nicole. Why is it a different question? 15 year old guides that sound. 15 year old guys. Yeah, or an 18 year an 18 year old guy. Like, like, yeah, give me that. The awkward teenager. There's like a there's a huge gap between 15 and 19. That's true. As yeah. like maturity levels. So, but no, I don't. That particular age range doesn't just get me going. See, not since I was was that age does that work. For, <laughs> I don't seek out like teen porn or whatever on the internet like at all. You don't so see I'm it also in no. I don't seek it out. Oh, see. <laughs> oh, oh, I see it. I just don't <laughs> I see it. I just don't go after. You got that filter. <laughs> so men are at 60 percent yes for that, and women are at. Eighteen <laughs> percent. Poor fifteen-year-old guys. Yeah. And then, so I guess we we can go into rape and incest. We but should, I th- we I should think we're, probably skip those. <laughs> <laughs> well, the percentages on rape are men are at fifteen, women are at thirty-five. Interesting. For incest, men are at twenty-five, and women are at thirteen. I mean, I'll go ahead and say I'm not attracted to my older brother. So <laughs> I thought you were gonna say I, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say we're gonna go on the record and say I'm not attracted to my rapist. <laughs> that either. Uh, here's one. Your significant other performing sexual act with another person. No. 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 I'm a pretty solid no on that. Josh. Yeah, it's it depends on the person, I guess. Mm. Like some hobo like, in, yeah. the, in the train yard. Like a, like a so skis much. level? <laughs> CFP right out of But the like dumpster. Brad Pitt, it's yeah, fine. No. <laughs> Nicole? I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about both genders here. I mean. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, then yes. I'm going to go with the yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll say yeah. Yeah. Because it's the same with the group sex thing. I'm, mm. I'm fine with it. I'm cool with it. So men are at... 20, no, 19%, and women are at 18%. I'm surprised. Mm. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I think it's because the way the question is worded. Mm -hmm. Because, like, 
when you read it, like for some reason, my brain put that together is, would you like for your significant other to cheat on you? <laughs> <laughs> and then when Josh started making it interesting, I was like, oh, 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 yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, my, well, my mind just went like straight to threesome. I was thinking, but yeah, it does say. No, I didn't say anything about you. Yeah, it, it, now that I think about it, it doesn't say anything about me. So I have to rethink that. I don't know. It, it is worded kind of strangely. Being strangled. Nah. Nah. No. 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 Oh, wait. But, like, how, though? Like, with hands or, like, a big dick? <laughs> <laughs> Being nude in public. Wait, I want to know what the, I want to know what yeah, the percentage was. Oh, strangled. strangled. Uh, men are at 8%. Women are at 32. Uh, see, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, being nude in public. Just generally or maybe? If, <laughs> if, if you're aroused by the idea of being nude in public. No, I'm not. I'm not aroused by it, but man, uh, <laughs> I love doing it. <laughs> yeah, I love. <laughs> man, I've never been kicked out of an elementary school so fast. <laughs> <laughs> they front upon that TGI Friday. <laughs> Unlimited apps, my ass. <laughs> Literally, my ass. <laughs> Sir, you can't just smear food on your naked body. <laughs> We're going to have to ask you to leave. I'm not getting anything out of it. Look, dick's not hard. <laughs> okay, sir. As long as your dick does not become hard, but when it does, you are out. You didn't even look at it. Look at it. <laughs> well, now it's hard. You're looking at it. <laughs> Strangle me. <laughs> no. Mm. Nicole. 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 No. Uh... I don't know if like the I, the idea of like just like walking around naked in public doesn't work for me, but like exhibitionism, like if you were to do things in public, <laughs> see that's but that's I'm, not I'm what it is. That. Yeah. It's not what it's that's asking. Not, yeah, it's not what it's so, asking. So like, yeah, no, my body's not good enough for me to be aroused by being nude in public. So <laughs> <laughs> no, mine either. <laughs> if I yeah, if I had like a six pack, I'd probably be like, yeah, <laughs> nude yeah. in public. Come on, guys. So you're, men, you're being too way too hard on yourself. <laughs> men are at fourteen percent and women are at eighteen percent. Let's see. Urolagnia. Oh, man. I don't know what that is. Arousal pleasure from urine. (laughs) (laughs) I think we're all a strong yes. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) I mean... (laughs) You know, I've I've campaigned on that platform for a long time, <laughs> the piss platform. So, uh, I, but I'm gonna have to go now, unfortunately. I'm also gonna go now. No. Yeah. No. I think for all of these, the rest of these, we're all gonna say no, at least publicly <laughs> on a podcast. <laughs> oh no, you might be surprised because it's urine, bestiality, necrophilia, Jesus, chorophilia. Which what is, is that? Feces. Oh. And well, it's surprising to me that they didn't put pee and poo together. It seems mm-hmm. like no, it's very different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's very different. Right. Well, do you think they were trying to be sensitive to those communities? They're like, well, we can't put those together yeah. because the poos don't like the peas, and the peas <laughs> don't like the poos. The golden showers and the Cleveland steamer people are oh, party God. lines. <laughs> and then the last is a metaphilia, which is, is vomit. Ew, oh. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't oh. either. And that is well, the, I, I, and that I know is 1% of men, thing. 0% of yeah. women. <laughs> I know everything's a thing to like somebody. Right. There, right? This so. podcast is a, a thing to yeah. somebody. And somebody, mean, is somebody is jerking off to us right now. Very hard, yeah. I mean, they are just, I mean, this is how they climax, only on Mondays and Wednesdays. I'm surprised. They, I mean, I feel like they left some things out. Like, they said nude in public, but there's no, like, sex in public. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Or masturbation in public, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Because, like, that's incredibly um, an in thing right now. Or, like, um, watching your partner masturbate. Yeah. Is that on there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying. They did. I feel like they missed out on some things. So what we need to do is we need to make a better Our own quiz. For the Tadpog Nation. <laughs> there wasn't even, what, autoerotic asphyxiation. <laughs> Sam, yeah, there was yeah, strangling, but... But not your... Yeah. Str- not, Sam, Sam, not help jerking us off while you're hanging. Data. Sam would love to put together this data for us in, in a bar in a bar graph. Yeah, they didn't have having sex until you black out. I want I want the I want the Venn diagram of uh, furries. Uh, furries is not they didn't on have there. Furries, yeah. Poopy people and pee people. Poopy so, people. Uh, poopy voyeurism. People. Voyeurism wasn't on there. Yeah, voyeurism. Because yeah, right. maybe, but it is the sex subreddit. So maybe they just like assume they're like these are the things that everyone's into. Yeah, <laughs> could be. 
Okay, who's into furries? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. yes, we're all yeah. we're all into furries. I'm in the light furry. I, I, <laughs> I've come a long way since I originally made a statement about furries on on the podcast. So now you can do fox ears and a fox butt plug, <laughs> yeah, but not full costume, but not full costume, because <laughs> I just don't understand. I, you don't get to see the just parts. Not, it's just not for me. I gotta see the parts. <laughs> Maybe if there's like little holes where I could like stick my my hands in the costume and get a hold of some parts. I mean, even Heathcliff's like, girlfriend had like an hourglass figure. Me, come on. Yeah, I'm right. The very first time in my life I was ever exposed to furry subculture was on, <laughs> furry sucks. on an episode that, of CSI. That one party. Because of this That's episode, probably of CSI. not a good way. No, <laughs> <laughs> I always associate. Furries with Ipecac, because that was in the episode. Uh, so, like, that's it. I hear furry, and my first thought is Ipecac and So it was a bunch, bunch of people dressed up as animals just throwing <laughs> just, up on the floor? The, like, Somebody did it to death. No, in, in the episode, there was, like, a furry love triangle. So one of them covered the other furry's Aww. suit with Ipecac. So when they yiffed. Yeah, I've fucking seen this. And they oh, licked, they licked their costume. It. They got sick because they were licking Ipecac. So yeah, from then on, that's all. I cannot think of furries without thinking so of the cat. So yiffing is like grooming each other. It's like part of yiffing is like part of their furry sex. Okay. Now every time I think about furries, it's interlinked with bad television. <laughs> that was back when it was good television. That was back with the original cast. Oh, so. I don't know. That, that was like my favorite show. We'll, I think we'll just we're gonna have to agree to disagree. <laughs> that was whenever I was in high school, and I um, okay. Well, you just explained yourself. <laughs> Whenever um, I had ball games, I had to. I was a cheerleader. Yeah. When they had ball games the night that that show came on. My dad would record it for me on VHS, so I could watch it the next oh, day. That was nice. That was. Good. He's a nice guy. Anybody call us? No. No, no <laughs> idea. Like I was, I was stalling for time, hoping somebody call us while we talked about oh, BDSM and vomit play. <laughs> Man, I'm really glad that you did that because while we were talking, 22 people called us. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. That's pretty good. Oh. All right. Let's. I see. turned on the Tadpog signal for calls. <laughs> Here's the first call, um, unless we play this on the last time we did calls, in which case, just pretend like you don't hear it. Mm -hmm. I really don't hear it. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tadpog, this is Jay calling it, or I guess, I guess, I'm the Cody duplicate now. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of offended by that, but I'll, I'll let it slide this time, just because I like you guys so much. That's pretty mm -hmm. nice. I mean, I am definitely no Cody duplicate. <laughs> the things that I had to do to him to get him to listen to your show and to oh, call Cody. into your show, I would need the Tadpog disclaimer before that call. <laughs> yeah. Have, have we heard of calling things. at the same time? But on the yeah. same kind we'll of see. terms, I'm going to bring up a Jacob of Wolf fighting fame cringeworthy <laughs> topic. Things that porn has ruined for you. So I'm going to I'm going to ask you guys: Is there anything that Porn has ruined for you in your life. Like, uh, when I was 14, I watched a ridiculous amount of Bukaki videos, <laughs> and the term fill your cup has been completely ruined, and <laughs> just tie pins in general have been ruined for me. I can't look at them without thinking of ridiculous amounts of jism inside of them. And uh, <laughs> vacuum cleaners have been ruined for me because of Scary Moby. And uh, ice cream cones because of two girls, one cup. So I'm just curious if there's anything that uh, has ever has been ruined by you for porn, by for you by porn. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, I really hope that Jacob is just cringing right now wherever he's listening to this. Oh, he's he's already not listening to yeah. this episode anymore. Yo, he belding out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, is there anything that porn has ruined for you? Hitler. <laughs> please, please elaborate. Tyler really liked Hitler before porn. <laughs> I can't look at a picture of Adolf Hitler without there's this one scene from a porn uh, where it's just a picture of Hitler and then suddenly um, a huge black dick bursts out of his mouth. <laughs> and it's an actual like... Like a tongue? It's a guy that like his tongue. It's a guy... Behind naked naked guy behind this picture of Hitler and he pushes his dick through Hitler's <laughs> mouth to get a blowjob from a girl... <laughs> In front of the the Hitler have uh, you, picture, have you seen the uh, the pictures that were le released? I, I don't remember if we did it or uh, Britain or who, but it was uh, it's sort of a way to discredit Hitler. But they released uh, 
uh, like a Hitler lookalike. They made a porn or had uh, several naked women surrounding Hitler. Of course, you know, it was just a duplicate, but uh, they released them and, like, I think airbombed them over Germany. Yeah. To, to prove he's not a good cushion boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. I don't know if I have one. I, I don't really get, like, hung up on stuff like that. Like, I could have, like, I could watch two girls, one cup, and then go, I, I don't like ice cream, but if I did, I could go eat a chocolate ice cream cone. I wouldn't. Go to your second it, job yeah. where you give, you're an ice cream truck man. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, stuff like that doesn't really bother me, so I, I wouldn't say, I mean, it probably has given me a little, or at least did early on, like, a skewed view yeah. of what sex should be, but. I guess I, Kiss from a Rose. Just because you said that. The song Kiss from a Rose by Seal is yeah. kind of ruined for me. Yeah, but that's not the porn's fault. I think that's <laughs> E-Fuck's fault. Because <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was edited in. I would love to link it in the show notes, but none of us could find <laughs> oh, it. Oh, man, luck, I wish we could find dragons. it. Luck Dragons. e has ruined Luck Dragons. Yes. <laughs> um, porn has enriched my life. So I don't really... I mean, I will say that I've got a lot more things that <laughs> turn me on now. I feel like it's like the other way... like. Fish Lips Jay, I feel like you got the bad of it and I got the good of it. Like I can just hear someone say something now and it's like, oh, wow, all right, I'm aroused. <laughs> Nicole, do you watch much porn? Um, I mean, comparatively to you, probably. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but I always hear, I don't hear a lot of, of girls that like actively use porn when they masturbate. Um, like it's, it's usually like, I know a few that do, but other women, when they describe the process of masturbating, it's like they have to imagine themselves like in like a white room or they have to be in a certain state of mind where there's like nothing else but that moment. Or unless they want a lot of karma on Reddit and then they say that they do. Yep. <laughs> yep. As long as they're wearing socks, they're room. comfortable. Mm-hmm. That's, that was that was even on Lucky Louie whenever his wife is talking about like how she, what she has to do when she wants to have an that's orgasm. That's what I do when I meditate is I think about a white room. <laughs> um, I just assume that all – I mean I was not in a sorority, but I assume that all girls in sororities just have sex with each other all day. Really? <laughs> so, yeah. That's from porn. That, mm-hmm. You're right. That is definitely from porn. <laughs> Also, um, not porn related. Also fraternities. <laughs> fraternities. <pretty soon. laughs> but um, something that Tyler said early on in me and Josh's relationship about something that Josh's previous sexual life um, included, I can't look at knee-high socks. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I will not wear knee-high socks because I just, I can't. Yeah, I, I understand can't. that. Wait, oh, no, I do know something that porn gave me a ske- skewed view on. I was a pizza Mihai delivery socks. guy for <laughs> I was a pizza delivery guy for two years, and I only saw one naked person, and that was some old guy, some like old, old guy that just got out of the shower and like dropped his towel while he was trying to pay me, like <laughs> quote unquote on accident dropped his yeah, towel. Yeah, it was like, it was definitely on accident. Wait, yeah. wait, wait! It was Oops, definitely on. I need to pay for this pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm not even hard. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was definitely on accident. I can't. I, I feel like I've told the story on Tadpog, but no, he. Uh, I don't know that. No, I don't know that I've ever even heard the story. Uh, I was delivering pizzas. I we we had told him like 40 minutes or something. We had told him we will definitely look at your but, dick. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Instructions for driver. <laughs> look at my dick. We're sending them over now. Uh, I'm no. gonna leave. I'm gonna start leaving creepy notes on that. <laughs> when they ask, like, I'm gonna be like, send your prettiest girl, <laughs> and then draw a heart. <laughs> yeah, that'll definitely work out for you. It's definitely gonna work out. <laughs> wear, make her wear knee high socks. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I show up early. I show up like after 15 minutes. Uh, I knock and knock. Finally, the guy comes to the door, and he had ju- like he was in the shower when I was knocking, and he had this. Uh, he had a towel uh, on. He was still like soaking wet, and he has uh, the money piled up by this little like Stacks. this little uh, lamp stand next to the door, and he goes to grab it, and he knocks it all off in the floor, and he just like as a reflex, he goes to like catch it. A towel drops, the door swings open, and I just see this this 
like seventy year old naked man just like scrambling around, like dripping wet. <laughs> so I just I just reach over and like shut the door. An <laughs> old man grabbing at money is the worst like ducktails yeah. thing. <laughs> well, I'm thinking he's like in one of those booths where they have all the dollar bills that like fly around. He's trying to grab them all. So no, I was never propositioned uh, for like uh, attractive milf. That mm. couldn't pay for their pizza, never yeah. propositioned me or anything like that. So. How much I, did that guy tip you? I, no, I don't remember. Not much. Did you just know. run away? I would have. <laughs> I would have quit. My, I would like would call my boss, be like, "I quit. Goodbye." <laughs> They're like throwing the phone in the ditch. And going, one <laughs> one porn site I never could really understand was Big Sausage Pizza, to where they have like their a hole in the middle of the pizza and yeah. stick their dick through and get the blowjob around the pizza. Like I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. At I all. mean, I guess food play is not something for me. I'm I don't, very open minded, yeah. but food play is not something I understand. I don't get it, but it's also not something that I'm going to roll out. <laughs> <laughs> so, want to wait for Nicole? Nah. Okay. We got another call. Okay. This is from 319. Nah, if it's going to be a call, let's wait for it then. <laughs> if it's going to be a text, I say just keep going, but okay. if it's a call, I feel like. What do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> Tell me about knee high socks, Josh. I'm not going to talk about Nia. I thought she Why was going to say Liz Vicious. Because I remember you had a big thing for Liz Vicious back in the day. I had a little thing for Liz Vicious that, that you guys wrong? fucking blew up. There's nothing wrong with having a thing for Liz Vicious. No, there's not at all. I think she's cute. I think she's attractive. But yeah. between you and Ashley Shake, yeah, you guys <laughs> just took that and ran with it. Well, you say, I, I feel like I really never gave you shit about Liz Vicious. Did you? I feel like I didn't because, like, I would have felt like such a hypocrite. And yeah, like, <laughs> Josh and Liz Vicious. I'd been like, yeah, I get it. I understand. I don't. I don't remember you giving a shit specifically. I remember Tyler and Shake. <laughs> but <laughs> I was like, I'd be. I jerked off to her. So if anything, I was trying to get closer to you, <laughs> <laughs> and you shut like, me out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it left me so in the cold. Your way. <laughs> come on, come on, Josh. Bomb with me, Liz Vicious. Quit making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> We waited for you, Nicole, for our, our next oh, call. Thank you. You're welcome. Here we go. This is from 319. Fucking Mother Chad Pie. What's up? It's Kyle, knower of names, calling from Iowa. Um, I'm going to do a Would You Rather. Okay. Psych. No, just kidding. Oh. I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a Murder, Mary, Make Love. Make oh, love. Sweet. Oh. Your choices are Scarlett Johansson. Giada from the Food Network and Miley Cyrus. Ready, go. Kill Miley. Who's, okay. Who's the Food yeah, Network I don't, person? Giada De Laurentiis. As soon as he said Gianni, I was like, or Gianna? Gianna. It's Giada. Giada? Giada is the Food oh, Network. Man, I, I, am, I am way underqualified to answer this question. <laughs> I barely know one of the people. Because Gianna is a porn star I'm into. Right, and that's Gianna. why that's what I thought he was I thought he was mentioning Gianna. I was like, oh, I know Tyler's gonna do Gianna that. Michaels, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, I'm not into Miley Cyrus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, kill kill, Ma kill, Miley. kill Miley. I gotta look I gotta I don't, look up. Yeah, this. I don't know. No, I already I have my answer. She like. If she's from Food Network, I'm killing Miley Cyrus. I'm making love with Scarlett Johansson. And I'm marrying the girl from the Food Network because obviously she can cook, right? And she and she's incredibly attractive. And there you go. I think Gio De Laurentiis is oh, better looking. Oh, that's her. I've seen her. There you go, guys. I think Gio De Laurentiis is more attractive than Scarlett oh, yeah, Johansson. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know Scarlett. Yeah, Johansson I'm gonna I'm gonna cook. sleep with her. That's the, and then, that's the thing with yeah, that that's I'm a going good, for. That's a really good. Yeah, her. I'll sleep with her and then I'll marry Scarlett Johansson. So okay. Um, what? I feel like judge me. I don't care about food. I'm not marrying. <laughs> that's her. true. I'm not, I'm not marrying her for the food. <laughs> I don't. I kind of feel like you really can't go super wrong with this. Like this is a very generous question mm -hmm. because it's like there's really no bad answer. I feel mm -hmm. like. I mean, I'm not in love with Miley Cyrus, but I, I don't think it'd be in the world if she's like, "Hey, you would you like to have sex?" By the way, your wife's totally cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I, I don't know, but I guess I would probably kill her because I think the, out of the three, she's the most annoying, e including the one that I don't know. Um, <laughs> the one I don't know, I would say I'd probably just have to um, make love with because mm -hmm. I don't really know her well enough to marry her yet. And I don't want to rush into this thing not knowing anything about her. She's very, very attractive, though, based on mm -hmm. those photographs. Uh, I'm not saying that's how she got her spot on television at all. I'm sure she's yeah. very talented. Um, and then I guess that just that just leaves Scarlett Johansson. My, the same as Nicole. I'm going to... I will make love to Scarlett Johansson and marry Giada Laurentiis and murder Miley. Because of the food? I think Giada is more attractive. 
Uh, I find her more pleasant anyway. I like I, I used to watch Giada's show, so all across the board, Giada De Laurentiis. She was top five for me five years ago, maybe. So, yeah, I've always had a big thing for her. So I'm, I'm on board. We'll marry. Put a ring on it. Thanks for calling, Kyle. Thanks for the very uh, kind question. Instead of making us choose about <laughs> what kind of fluid we're tossing around a balloon. And <laughs> Kyle, that. Kyle asked for a title on the, the Facebook group. And he's like, just anything. Just give me a title. I was like, all right. Um, How about the title list? <laughs> the title list. <laughs> I was like, what's my, what's my daughter's name? And he knew it immediately. And I was like, knower of names. There you go. That's why he said the Kyle, knower of, names. knower of names. Gotcha. We got another call. You want to wait for Josh now? <laughs> Yeah, let's wait for Josh. So what's the deal with knee socks? Josh wouldn't mm. answer. <laughs> <laughs> while he, now while he's gone, you could you could say whatever you want. Or do you want me to answer it? Yeah. I really want to know. Whenever um, Josh and I were first dating and Tyler fucking hated me, um, <laughs> they were in the car going somewhere and Tyler kept saying, Josh was on the phone with me and Tyler kept saying things referencing Josh and his ex-girlfriend having sex, including... <laughs> Knee socks. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's doing it to piss me off. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you now. <laughs> Don't apologize to her. Apologize to me for... Ruining knee socks. Yeah, ruining <laughs> knee socks. Oh, man, that is... That's right. I'll wear knee socks for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'll get some, like, 70s NBA-style basketball shorts and knee socks. <laughs> it's going to be super hot. <laughs> um, I get the socks, Josh. I you have to say I have socks. a Magic Johnson. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. We've got another call. Oh, shit. Uh, this might be the one that I just played. I don't know. Let's see. No, it's definitely not. This is from 270. Motherfucking dad bod. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I'm sure you have a timestamp somewhere on your Google world there, but uh, it's about 5.30 in the morning. Uh, so the good news is, is I'm not drunk. Well, that could be good and bad. I'd rather be drunk. Uh the bad news is, is that I am in the middle of the NF fucking E Arkansas. Um, oh, I I'm, feel don't you. know if Tyler told you guys <laughs> or if you saw anything that I posted on my last post of Facebook ever, but uh, I am en route to moving to Houston, Texas. I got a huge job promotion and I'm really excited, but I've also been very sad. Congrats. You know, I love Nashville and I love everything about it, but you know, sometimes you got to change. But, uh, yeah, it's about 5.30. Um, I'm one F away from being caught up on Dad Bob. So, first off, fuck you guys. Uh, I like being 30. And uh, that just means I'm going to fuck younger dudes now. So Let's see how she would answer on that quiz. 15 through 19. Yeah, might be a little delusional. <laughs> um, but my question is, uh, you guys know I travel a lot, and I know you guys travel a lot, and there's a lot of cool festivals and a lot of cool shit in Texas. Uh, you know, you have South by Southwest and – uh, Austin City Limits, and I know you guys travel to Dragon Con and Atlanta, and my question is if you have any travel plans coming up for any kind of cons or maybe one that you want to hit that you've never been to or any other kind of festival stuff like that. Um, I'm really bummed that I can't just drive home now and come record with you guys. It will definitely have to be an airplane ride. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't be home, and it doesn't mean that my first stop in uh, Kentucky will be to come record with Dad Fog. Um, by the way, do not remember calling you guys at all on either, <laughs> uh, any of those drunk calls. <laughs> my 30th birthday was awesome, and I bought about $50 worth of Taco Bell and Pizza Hut <laughs> nice. for me and all my friends. And uh, that's how I ended my 30th birthday, and it was phenomenal. I woke up wearing only my shoes and surrounded by fire sauce <laughs> from Taco Bell, and I thought that was pretty classy. Um, Keep up the good work. You're almost at the top of the list. Can't wait to keep listening to you guys, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Um, have a good one. Love y'all. Have a good time. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. We do miss you, Taryn. We do miss you. Thank and you also for calling. dates how long we are back. We're back in the Tadfog call log. I've got, three, I've got three things to say to you, Taryn. Four things. First thing, thank you very much for calling. Second thing, my dad works in Houston. You guys should totally hang out and eat some Taco Bell. Was he with you on your 30th birthday? He, he might have been. He, I don't know if he likes fire sauce, but I mean, maybe. <laughs> Third thing, I forgot. Fourth thing, what do you think about knee socks? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we, all, we both want to go to Gen Con. I, I know really, you really, really want to go to Gen Con. I really, really want to go to Gen Con, which is like 
a much nerdier con than than Dragon Con. Because mm-hmm. um, like Dragon Con, I feel like is kind of like sexy nerdy. From what I understand, Gen Con is just straight up nerdy. Mm. Just do not give a fuck about like. We're not putting on any kind of fucking show here. We're going here and we're going to fucking game. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to wake up at five. We're going to fucking game until eight. We're going to go to sleep. We're going to wake up again and game, which sounds really fun to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you're trying to do that. You can do that at Dragon Con, but. Not really. Man, I mean, not I, really. I've done the whole, whole day gaming before, but the consistency of how good those games are, like, more than likely, if I game all day, at least. 60% of it is completely wasted, awful time. And that's when I said not really. I really should have clarified. You you are correct. You technically can go to Dragon Con and game from morning to night, but you're pretty much going to be playing the same thing. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of variety of games there. Um, you're going to do six Savage World games right. and maybe one Pathfinder campaign. Right. That's it. And it's, I mean, it's really nice. And then, um, and I'm sure he's listening, but Randy, who ran the Call of Cthulhu games for several years in he a row. He's the outlier. He Man, always brought an amazing were, game. Uh, yeah, oh, super amazing. So, And then like he's left, so now it's just kind of like there's not really a Call of Cthulhu game unless you want to do a D20 Call of Cthulhu. And then <sighs> my personal opinion on that is why play Call of Cthulhu if you're playing the D20 version? You might as well play D&D. Garbage. A scary, a scary D&D. Yep. Um, so, wow, that kind of went on a really... Um, game nerdy tangent. Um, but that's um, probably not something I'm going to be able to do, unfortunately. I've gotten the go-ahead from Nikki because I like, said, hey, are you cool if I just like disappear for like four days uh, and go to Gen Con? She was like, yeah, absolutely. But like, it's not something that I can just go and do um, by myself and like pay for housing and stuff like that because like the hotels are way, 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 way jacked up, just like they are at Dragon Con because yeah. it's like normally they're 80 bucks a night and then, like at Gen Con, they're like three hundred bucks a night, mm-hmm. kind of deal. So, man, you have a can real quick. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. Yeah, we because uh, we talked about going with you to Gen Con, but it's just not gonna work out. Uh, yeah, Dragon Con's good. Uh, we've done uh, Nicole and I uh, for the last few years had done uh, Comic Con in San Diego. Yeah. Um, I really. Then, I still feel bad about like you guys got me and Nikki tickets uh. and then like we totally <laughs> fucking bailed. Not because either of us wanted to bail, but it was just because, oh, maybe we should have realized that like buying a house was really fucking expensive <laughs> and things were going to be tight for a couple weeks. <laughs> Uh, was- yeah, I mean, I think you had a reasonable excuse <laughs> buying a house, but um, we, we actually didn't go th- uh, last year, and we're not going this year. But uh, we intend to go back uh, soon, hopefully soon. Um, and then, uh, Meister would, for Comic Con though, I I would be fine going to Comic Con, and I, I mean, you kind of have to get the four day pass, but. And not going to the con yeah yeah if every you do day. if you do Comic Con uh, they sell of course uh, it's four days they sell badges uh, day by day and they also have the four day pass which getting uh, unless you just live in town there like really close by there's it's pointless to get just one day pass I would just because of the travel time or no it's uh, you would have to stand in line uh, to get your badge which would be six hours of your day right there okay. by the time you get yeah. it uh, and then you can't and, do and, anything yeah right. then the time you got there 90 percent of comic-con is standing in line see that's the thing like i enjoy it and i think that you know for most nerdy people it's like you know a once in a lifetime thing it's i like I'm, mecca yeah. yeah yeah but i after experience we went three years and it's like I don't, it's so stressful, and you get to see so little, and I feel like it, it, it's a trade show that they let the public attend. Less, gotcha, right. Okay. Less of a con, more of a trade show. Gotcha. And, like, it's cool to be there for the exclusives, for the big reveals and stuff. Right. But, I mean, you know, you see that stuff online, like, two minutes later. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, people are live tweeting right. it. All, so all, of the, all the news you're going to get, but it is cool to go there and experience And a lot of times they'll hand out free shit. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah. You're wearing a shirt. shirt. Wearing, wearing that's a, shirt. a sweet Wolverine shirt. This is my favorite shirt that I own. That's and it awesome. When we got free at Comic Con. Uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it it is really cool to experience, and I feel like after three years, we finally really got the hang of it. Yeah. Because uh, I remember the first year we were we we're going, and I was just like dazzled the whole time. I was just <laughs> I had to like I, poke and be like, people are gonna run you over. Yeah, you I was walk. just like. <laughs> Wandering around with like this, this my jaw was just dropped up. I was just wandering around looking at everything. Um, oh, and I remember I researched like 
of course I did. I researched them going on the first year. You? <laughs> yeah, crazy. <laughs> but it, they were like, you're going to have to wait in line for, you know, three or four hours. It's not three or four hours. It's mm-hmm. like eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Standing in line, the con. Yeah, we. Yeah, it, that's basically what it is. I feel like by the third year, we had it figured out pretty well. Yeah. Like, yeah. we knew, like, we stuck to the schedule. We're like, okay, we're going to have to get up at 345 this morning so that we can get mm-hmm. and uh, and see all the things we want to see. Because that's what you do. You camp pretty much. You go, you stand in line one time to. Uh, to stay in one room the, like the whole day. That's all you do is one day. They don't, just, yeah, because they don't make anybody leave. Between yeah, they panels. don't clear the they gotcha. don't clear the rooms. So if you want to see something at noon, you better be spending the night. Yeah. So because um, you know everybody that want, you want to see the thing at noon, but everybody else wants to see the thing at two o'clock. Yeah. But they're getting in line early too, so they're gonna like stay in in the room and watch all mm-hmm. the stuff that they don't care about. Right. Just so they can see that so they one can thing. Be there. Yeah. Um, so uh, so that's what we usually do. Like Saturday mornings, we get up at like three, and we don't get home mm-hmm. till like after midnight because we've stayed in this room. Yeah, all day. but so the best thing about that though is that we stayed in Hall H all day on Saturday for the last two years we went. And Kevin Smith is always the last thing. And he's like always in Hall H, right? And everybody oh. leaves. Everybody leaves before Kevin Smith, so we're like three rows back. And he mentions that, doesn't he? Because yeah. like he he played his, I think he normally plays his Comic Con um, show on his podcast, mm-hmm. and I remember him mentioning like, where did everyone go? <laughs> yeah, it's the yeah he does thing. the he does his podcast right like oh, um, immediately after the masquerade is that same time. Yeah. That's why. But yeah, it's great. I think that like. The reason I don't want to go to Gen Con alone is because of like what you said. Like it took you three years to kind of <laughs> learn Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Like it took me at least a solid year. Like the first year I went to Dragon Con, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Like I, you know, learn like oh the little secrets. Like okay, I go to this. Okay, so this always happens in this hotel. This mm-hmm. other thing always happens in this other hotel. Like learning all that shit. Like. Man, that's not an experience I want to go through alone at Gen Con. <laughs> like just me by myself, right. just not knowing anybody, like just being like, well, I guess I'll figure this out. Um, the other one, I can't think of the name of the con. It just started, I think, and um, Mr. Wiley was uh, running the games, the board games. Uh, it's in Florida. The Jacksonville Con? Is it? Is it Jacksonville uh, Con? It's What's on it? Amelia, Amelia Con. Amelia yeah. Con, okay. Yeah, um, uh, I would have loved to have gone to that last oh, year, yes. but it was, it was right after Dragon right Con. after Dragon yeah. Con. So yeah, we we didn't have the free time, uh, but hopefully uh, I'll get to that. But it it just yeah. started. Uh, um, I think like a couple of years ago, right? And then it, like yeah. board gaming. This is like mm-hmm. the first year they did board mm-hmm. gaming. If anyone in Florida is listening, definitely look at Northern Florida or fuck anywhere. Definitely look up Amelia Con because like I I totally would have loved to go because like Wiley is the perfect person to have yes. in charge of board games mm-hmm. because like he can like just eat rules and then he can chew rules up and then like regurgitate them into the baby birds mouths and we're the baby <laughs> yeah birds. he does a great job of explaining like oh, you're yeah. five yeah absolutely yeah, yeah so so yeah after after a long day of gaming at dragon con whenever you're uh, halfway drunk it's uh, two thirty in the morning and you need to learn <laughs> rules <laughs> To a very complicated board uh, game, uh, Mr. Wiley is the perfect person to he's explain. He's had plenty it. of experience. Yeah. <laughs> I also really want to go to PAX sometime. Mm. PAX or PAX, um, any of the PAXs, because there's several now. Any of those I would like to go to and check out. Um, but the older I get, the more, um, well, the less relevant I feel. Like people talk about video games now, and it's sad that like Tyler and I do a video game podcast, but like I know nothing about current video games. Mm. Like, I feel like before we started this, I kind of did. Now I have no idea, unless it's, like, a big deal on Steam or something. Yeah, my current video game, there are a few that I follow. Like, I'm uh, following the the new Legend of Zelda, the, the Wii U yeah. Zelda that's coming out. Uh, so, you know, as soon as that comes out, I'm probably grab that up. But uh, other stuff, it's pretty much limited to what I see on Steam. Is, uh, you know, what Steam shows me, that's my pretty much my current knowledge of uh, or, or knowledge of current video games. Uh, we don't have to fill, we don't have to fill air if you oh, yeah. don't want to. I was going to mention. Like I was going to say. I feel like related to cons. I'd like to go to Bonnaroo. Really? I would. I would really man. like to go to Bonnaroo. Um, that's what Nashville, right? It's in Tennessee. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere. It's like yeah, been, not clearly. in Nashville. It's like out in the 
the boonies. Gotcha. So why? Just for like any specific reason or just to experience just it? Just for or? the experience. Yeah. And you reading Tyler's notes? Yeah. What's he got on there? Um. <laughs> oh, he's, oh, I think these are notes. For, Proposition group for sex. I think these are notes. <laughs> I think these are notes for the, ooh, for the show notes. Ah, I gotcha. I was going to mention OMG Con. Yeah, that used to be in Paducah. Yeah. yeah. Now, oh, it's not? No, I think the it's in like Owensboro now, I think. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't think they said something about like So you guys are gonna do your first live show there, right? <sighs> I will look, I'm not super crazy about a live show, but like it would as, be great publicity. Yeah, but here's you think so? <laughs> yes, I do. I think that it would be great publicity. And all the podcasts I listen to do live shows. I know, they do. Some of them are really good. Not all of them, though. <laughs> I kind of, I'm worried that we're on the, like, not all of them list. <laughs> no, I think it would be good. I think, I think that, we just need and, an audience to laugh when we say something funny. R- definitely. <laughs> well, the thing is, um, I, I like the ones where they, like, talk for a little bit, and then they have, like, do, like, a panel where the audience asks questions or makes comments or whatever, you know? I think those are real, those work well. You do it like the live uh, the live crack show where we just yeah. you start off with one person and then <laughs> right. you introduce people gradually as yeah. No, I think that I think that would be fantastic. I wholeheartedly support you guys doing a live show. But the problem with a live show, Tyler, um, welcome back. The problem <laughs> yeah. with doing a, we're talking about doing a live show. Mm-hmm. The problem with doing a live show is I say things on this show that I don't want to say in public. <laughs> 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 like I that sex like- survey that we took at the beginning, <laughs> I would not want that in the live show. And I feel like Tyler would be like, this is definitely going in the live show. <laughs> well, my issue with the live show is I'd like, we make a live show, we get there, no one's there. Yeah, yeah that's the other thing. That doesn't even matter. Like, if, you, if there are three new people in the room who've never heard it, and they walk away liking it, and they all tell somebody else, I mean... You do first one and there's nobody there. You do another one, there might be ten people there. You do yeah. another one, there might be twenty five people there. And you, I mean, you, I'm saying, I I'm see saying. the logic in what you're saying, but like my emotional response is, <laughs> is uh, just nope. That's have, you gotta be prepared for the worst. Just have two and people. And whenever fucking. there are like fifty people okay. there, you're just like, this is super Josh, surprised. you've got you, you've got my attention. <laughs> have two people fucking while you record, and that will draw an audience. Well, you do have a point. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's true. Um, any volunteers? Josh? Uh, well, I mean, you saw how we answered on the survey. Yeah. So, no, not us. Uh, any listeners out there would like to come to our live show and have sex? You have to bring the partner. We cannot supply the partner for you. I just, and I feel, I really feel like it would be like, especially like a small con like that, it would be beneficial for both. Like, hey, we have fans. We have this many subscribers or this yeah. many listeners. We we can attract them to your con and then vice versa. People who are at the con who've never heard of you would come and listen and yeah. been mutually beneficial. Good for everyone. Now, like I said, I get the logic. But then you'd have to transport your equipment. You'd have to like... <laughs> In a Unplug suitcase. <laughs> yeah. Bubble wrap that shit. Surrounded with, yeah. With Sib barrels. has dirty laundry. <laughs> Sibians are really heavy, you guys. They're really heavy. <laughs> oh, you're right. We don't need a, we don't, they don't need to bring a partner. They just bring a Sibian. <laughs> <laughs> now, I had to step away for a moment because it turns out my daughter has a double ear infection and a cold. And man, vaccines don't have shit on the medicine we just had to give her. Oh, that really? Was, yeah, that's because I just had to give her an oral antibiotic. So I give her the liquid, which she doesn't like. I can, I it smells. I oh, can yeah. smell the amoxicillin. Sure, yeah. Like, oh, this is gonna be awful. And then I had to squirt. Meg, I held her while Meg had to squirt something up her nose and then vacuum it out. Well, why wasn't Meg helping? Why was she squirting? Things <laughs> <on that? laughs> it's so. gonna give her some issues later on. She's. <laughs> 20 years old and just has this flashback, just <laughs> panics for no reason. Yeah, like the vacuum, alter. somebody, <laughs> somebody, <laughs> yeah. Or like a somebody flip one of the yeah. vacuum. Because yeah. I, so. I, I held her, the doctor asked me to hold her the last round of vaccine she, that she had. That was, that is turning your mood on a dime all day long. Yeah. That was Did that the was doctor ask you to hold her because he knew that Meg had held her all the other times and wanted you to experience Meg, the misery as well? <laughs> Meg had done it the first time. And she cried and cried. Meg cried and cried and cried. And then, like this, she was like, "I can't do that again. I can't hold her and have her cry like that again." So yeah. then, I've I've gone to the next rounds of vaccines and held her. I like to think that the doctor looked at you and was like, "You don't have the emotional scars of a man who's held his baby while vaccinated. <laughs> Come here." <laughs> Whenever I was going into kindergarten, and you have to have all your shots to go to kindergarten, 
I was such a horrible child that I kicked and screamed, and it took like four nurses to hold me down to even mention that. Like, shit, you not. My grandmother had to have been so embarrassed. That's why you like that Wolverine shirt so much. You were the original Weapon X. <laughs> you just started slicing people up in the school. You've got the, the adamantium injection ready to go. <laughs> yeah, well, back, I mean, those, if you'd been born now, you might not have even had those shots going to kindergarten in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, Henry just had his vaccination, second round of vaccinations. Mm. So he's his temperature's running kind of high. Yeah. So he is not in a great mood. Yeah, but other than that, it could be much worse. Because <laughs> Nikki came back and she was like, they were telling me all the things that could go wrong, and it's like if things go wrong, they go really wrong. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but that happens like what? Yeah, it's like so 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 less than one percent. Yeah. yeah, move away from a less uh, inflammatory topic. Some grim, yeah, it's a hot button. <laughs> Hot button. Tony, tell me what you think about vaccinations. <laughs> I'm not sure where Tony lands on vaccinations. Yeah, me neither. But Tony, I promise, I promise I'm in, the, I'm in your camp, buddy. <laughs> Clearly, Henry <laughs> Henry's on his second round. So, All right, let's see. We got another call. This is from 270. 270. That's all I can hear. You damn kids and your video games. Look, you're going to have to turn this down because I need to get some sleep in here. It, it, and where did all these pop tarts come from? I don't remember having pop tarts. Was that was that Tim York? That was Jacob's dad. <laughs> <laughs> that was Jacob's dad. I've been sitting Man. on that call for weeks. Man, that just that like like <laughs> synapses in my brain that haven't fired in like 14, 15 years of just going off hearing that voice. And I was like, I was when I saw Josh's face when he figured it out. I was like, damn it, Josh knows. Because I was hoping like I was hoping we, we would like legitimately be like, well, that was a weird call. Yeah. <laughs> that was Jacob's dad. Jacob tells me that his dad is an avid Tad Pog listener now. <laughs> he has listened to oh, multiple funny. episodes. <laughs> So he probably hasn't made it that I don't know. Maybe he's made it this far to, into this one. Um, I mean, through all like the grim multiple episodes that Jacob has been on, because that's still a fairly large number. Um, or is Jake, he listening to the non-Jacob episodes? I, I did not ask Jacob that specifically, but according to Jacob, that his dad is an avid Tad Fog listener now. <laughs> that was great. Thanks, so, Tim. Yes, we did used to go over his house, and we'd make. Ridiculous Walmart runs come back with Pop Tarts and Calzones, and then just weird concoction drinks we would make to play I Never and then play video games. <laughs> I think we left swords on his floor mm. like one time and that thoroughly confused <laughs> slash infuriated. <laughs> <laughs> I want to also say that his audio quality on his call was really good. It was really good. <laughs> really yeah, good. really, really good. So, um, Wolf Fighting Fame Senior, uh, if you ever want to be on the show and talk about a video <laughs> yeah, game, yeah, I think that'd be great. I want Tim and Jacob to come on. We'll do like a we'll do a basketball game. It's fine. I'm all for it. I'm all, okay. We'll do arch, right. we'll do arch rivals. That with, sounds with good. Tim and Jacob York. I'm in. If, uh, Balls in your court. Serves, <laughs> Tim York is a fan uh, fr- uh, fan of the. Um, uh, Grand Theft Auto series, I think. Yeah, he's it. all about Grand Theft Auto. That's true. No, that's the game that I've played. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the new ones, but I, I remember. To my knowledge, like he he has bought multiple like PS3s because like a Grand Theft Auto <laughs> will come out and his PS3 won't work. Oh well, buy a whole new set. <laughs> he's, he's under the misconception that you have to have a, a new <laughs> PS3 for like each game. You have to buy a new system. Wait, that's not how it works? <laughs> Man, I could have saved a lot of money. I could have gone to Comic Con with you guys. <laughs> Instead I bought 14 PS3s because Tyler gave me all those games to play. <laughs> you like Assassin's Creed? You have to buy a new PS3 every year. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We got another call. This is from 239. Hey, Dad Bob. This is Fred. Long time listener. First time call. Nice. Legit. We've made hey, it. Now. Uh, I just want to tell you guys thank you for all that you do. So listen to the podcast. Keep up the great work and uh, keep them coming. Anyhow, I got a uh, would you rather for you guys. Don't be kidding. So, first <laughs> off. You uh, every time, every time you walk up to somebody, you have to tell them you're a loser. Anytime you walk up to anybody new, or every time you walk up to somebody, you have to kiss them on each cheek. I think I'd take the kissing 
you know, <laughs> it seems like you get in a lot less fights that way. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, yeah, you know. Get some weird people, but that wouldn't be too bad. But anyhow, that's all. Take care. The kissy cheek thing's kind of dangerous in Marsh County. But <laughs> so, so is County. the loser thing, right? <laughs> Man, you do that, you're liable. Get your ass kicked. <laughs> Man, but I'm I'm gonna go with the the kissy cheeks. I, oh, what was the first? Tell well, them a loser. loser. Oh, hmm. kissing is more positive. This is a I yeah. like. I, this is a pretty. This is a pretty sweet. Would you rather? I feel like <laughs> this is a very sweet one. Um, you say you're quoting Beck every time you have to say I'm a loser. No, you say you're a loser. You're oh. You have to tell the person that you're speaking oh, to that they're yeah, a loser, huh. right? Oh, okay. That's how I took nah, it. I'm a, mm-hmm. nah, I'm I'm kissing them then. Yeah. On the cheek. I'm going to kiss them cheeks. And then you just like develop this European accent mm-hmm. um, that's not too racist, but just like just enough that it's like you could pass as like European and then just that's just your thing. Yep. Did I ever bring up the uh, woman who would always kiss me on the cheek? Um, and when I worked in Lexington, there was a, a my, I had a, a co worker whose mom, she would come into the store and every time she would see me, she would say, oh, hello, and she would kiss me on the cheek. It got to the point where if I saw her at the store, I would hide. (laughs) 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 Because it made me extremely uncomfortable that she was kissing me on the cheek. And, you know, I couldn't just say, "Um, you know... Please don't kiss me on the cheek. It makes me uncomfortable. Instead, I'm just hiding around. Maybe she did the would you rather. Maybe she didn't have a choice. Maybe she did. And I think I would rather her kiss me on the cheek than say, you're a loser. Because one makes me hide. The other just makes me cry. (laughs) I remember I was, I bet I was 12 years old. We went to, I went with a friend to Six Flags. And amidst all the rides, we had to take a break. Went to see one of the shows there. We went to like this saloon show in the middle of Six Flags. Or it was like... Some kind of scene, typical Western scene, and two Can Can girls were, were big characters. They come out in the audience and breaks and stuff and talk. And there was one that I'd said something that I thought she was cute. And so whenever she was in the audience, my friend told her to kiss me on the cheek. And she did. And I was simultaneously like, one, <laughs> I was I was thoroughly embarrassed. And two, I had to I felt like I had to act like I was grossed out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and three, I had the the most prolific twelve year old boner of my life. <laughs> for the rest of the show, my eyes did not leave that can can dancer for the rest of the show. I I would love to know where she is now. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, thanks for calling, Fred. Um, I love a long time listener, first time caller. I feel like we're probably done here. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. Feel like we're probably done. I mean, this is a pretty long show. Yeah. I've got about an hour and a half right now. All right. You want to keep going? Oh, we end it here. If you if you feel in your gut, we need to end it here. I feel like. I mean, we can we can keep pressing our luck. No whammy, no whammy. What does your boner say? Uh, my boner says. My my boner says one more. Okay. One I more? have to be I have to be true to my boner. My boner okay. says one more. This is from 763. It is a text message. I'm so used to voicemail. That I, 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 I pressed it, and I was like, nothing's happening. There's just words here. I guess I should read them. Fucking Tadpog colon. I'll be the first to say it. The what historic girl are you quiz fucking sucked. <laughs> there, I said it. More Holocaust and cum jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, you asked for it. Tyler mentioned Hitler earlier, so we're off to a great start. It's like quiz sucked, or you felt like that part of the show sucked. Yeah, that's a good question. What sucked? The quiz, or did or did that whole episode <laughs> suck? Because that was pretty much all we did. <laughs> Um, my boner says one more because my boner really wants to end the show on a, That's on a voice typical now. boner. Yeah, yeah typical I know. Boner. Just <laughs> wants one more. <laughs> Give a boner a cookie. <laughs> can can girl kisses a boner. Just goes, <laughs> just does what it wants. All right, this is from four one zero. Hello, Tadpog. It is Tony. What's up, Tony? I was calling because I have a question regarding villains. So you guys talked a lot about or had a lot of questions about who your favorite uh, JRPG party is or who your favorite characters from video games or media, etc. are. Uh, and I was curious who your favorite bad guys are. Um, 
you know, you can pull from video games or comics or whatever media you wish. Uh, so what are your favorite bad guys or favorite villains? And if you were to make a video game, either a JRPG that was staffed entirely by villains where your goal is to take over the world or destroy the world, uh, or if you were to make, I don't know, an action RPG or whatever type of video game you would like, what kind of video game do you want to see where you get to control the bad guy? All right, guys, uh, keep up the good work, and I will be listening. Good question. Yeah, thanks, Tony. That is a really good question. Um, the kind of question that makes me wish that I screened these calls <laughs> because then I could think of an answer beforehand because um, that's a tough one for me because I really like villains. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Even when I was uh, a kid, I remember like watching Disney movies and um, other movies that weren't Disney but were trying to be Disney movies, like cartoons and stuff, and I remember always just being – most interested in the villain because I always thought the villain always had the most character. Mm -hmm. And then like the hero of the story, I just kind of felt like was just, well, that could be anybody because usually Mm -hmm. the hero just kind of, you know, rises to the occasion while while the villain kind of had like the villains, the whole reason the actions happen. The a hero is defined by his villain. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't know. Do you guys have any immediate answers? I've got a couple immediate answers. Yeah. Um, which I actually, as far as video games go, I know the the Final Fantasy three slash six episode I talked about. Uh, well, I thought Kefka was such a great villain, right? Uh, but really, I think uh, I think comic books have great villains. Like uh, uh, a few specifics, I think um, my favorite comic book villains are the ones that have a reason to be villains. Right, like Doctor Doom. He has seen the future. Uh, any scenario where he is not the ruler of the world, uh, the earth is doomed. Uh, so he has made it his goal to become the the ruler of the world, and the easiest way for him to do that is to be the villain. He doesn't care what other people thinks. He just has to do this to save the world. Uh, Magneto's another good one, because if, if there's any villain that is justified for being a villain uh, or you know using... Uh, the ends justify the means reasoning. Uh, it's Magneto. Um, uh, see, I think, Nicole, you've mentioned uh, one I didn't think about. Uh, is, the way you said that, I was like, and Nicole, she's <laughs> my <laughs> personal villain she, to my hero. Villain. Uh, she mentioned, okay, so you're both M's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just mentioned before Mr. Freeze. He just wants to save his wife. Mm-hmm. So, I, man, I think- I'm so glad you brought up Victor Freeze because he is... A crazy good villain. I was just re- rewatching um, Batman and Robin. The the, uh, the <laughs> I was, oh, no 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 not Batman and Robin because man whoa <laughs> I was rewatching the animated series and mm-hmm. the first episode with Mister Freeze. I think they only did like two episodes with Mister Freeze and they're both really good. But the very first one is so so good because like they do such a good job of creating empathy um, or sympathy for uh, for Victor Freeze. I just really I love good. Batman villains. I think that they, that's the, they're the best. Batman does have a really good source of villains because a lot of well, a lot of them are, but uh, a lot of them are just crazy people. Yeah, they're no superpowers, just crazy people. Well, I was gonna say I was gonna say the Joker and specifically Heath Ledger's Joker because. You know, we just said all these things about like villain is really good because villain has a reason. But like, I, I also really like it. I feel like it's really hard to pull off, but I really like it when there's a villain that just does not have any reason, but it still makes sense. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, and I feel like that's how mm-hmm. he, I mean, especially, I mean, the Joker in all iterations, but especially Heath Ledger's Joker because he just seemed like a person who was. You know, just wanted to see the world burn. I think is actually like mm-hmm. the the phrase used in the movie. I agree with you. It's really hard to pull off, but incredibly, and like because most of the times it just seems like a cop out, right? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, well, he's just <laughs> they're bad. Yeah, they're just bad. They just want to <laughs> do bad things. But like, yeah, I I don't. I did enjoy Heath Ledger's performance, but normally I enjoy villains that they have a streak of humanity. Because like I don't feel like anybody is just evil for no reason. No one's just right. born evil. Like I'd like to see that thread of humanity that leads them to where they are. So once you know enough about them, if you squint hard enough at their motives, you can almost understand. Picture yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's And of course, like I guess Venom and Eddie Brock and then eventually Flash Thompson, I enjoy like 
I guess I like a, a little bit of anti-hero mixed in with my villain. Uh, so comics, I go that direction. Of course, Magneto still. Um, from video games, I immediately thought of Ramses from Xenogears. Hmm. I really enjoy the way like he's evil just because he was he was basically born and raised as a tool to to do one certain purpose, uh-huh. and that's it. And then once his purpose is fulfilled, that villainy has like nowhere to go. And it's interesting to see how he develops after that. Uh, same for Rufus in Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, trying to fill his father's shoes. Not really being a bad guy, but having the weight of Shinra on his shoulders. Yeah, I and I, I see that, but like having just recently kind of replayed the beginning of Final Fantasy VII, I don't. I think they had a really good opportunity there, but but kind of dropped the ball a little bit because he is totally an asshole the first time you meet him. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's not just like, oh, I'm struggling with things. He's just like, fuck you, Cloud. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> uh, I love my favorite quote unquote villain because I'm gonna go to the the Naruto well because I love Itachi. But of course, Itachi, I don't want to spoil anything for Naruto, but Itachi has a very twisting and winding story. The closest villain that is, there's a reason to why he's evil, but the villain that has the least humanity that I enjoy the most, most is Orochimaru from Naruto. I absolutely love everything about Orochimaru because he's so, he's not like super, he's not an overpowered villain. He's just, he's so, he's scary and he's creepy and he's methodical. I like villains that have a lot of science behind them. He's all about research and ha- getting to his goal no matter what. So I like um, when you when you talk about the Joker and Nicole. When you mentioned Batman villains, I think like the reason like Batman villains are so compelling to me is because most of them, um, all, I mean, almost all of them like deal with sanity. Mm-hmm. And like, especially the Joker, which like, I think that is a threat of humanity because it's like sanity is that thread because it's like, this is what can happen. Like when you completely lose yourself and like, that's what's, that's what's scary mm-hmm. about the Joker. It's like, if you just lose com- all control and you lose that thread, then this is, this is what happens. Um, I also think like. <laughs> you may laugh, but I think Scar from The Lion King is a really good villain. <laughs> whenever, no, whenever he was oh, saying, man. like, put together, like, a team of villains, Scar was one that I thought of. <laughs> like, he's just ruthless. <laughs> I because I remember, like, out of all the Disney movies that I saw, like, as a kid, Scar is, like, the big villain that I remember. Like, I mean, I... That's I, the one that, like, breaks your heart. <laughs> like, yeah, because it's just... And it's, I mean, of course, you know, theatrically, I mean, it has ties, but it's it's just, like, that performance is really good. And um, I, it's, like, it dealing with family and, like, betrayal of family and, like, all of that is just, like, just left a mark, for sure. And it's it's also one of those things where it's, like... It makes sense for Scar to like, you know, if he feels for, forsaken, um, to like take this path and like plot. So, I mean, I, he's probably one of my favorite Disney villains. <laughs> I, I feel like too. There's a, another side of this uh, that, I mean, there there are the villains that I like. Like I mentioned, Doctor Doom, Magneto, Mysterio. stuff like that. <laughs> yes, uh, and then there's the villains that you hate. But that's the point. Like the the first one that came to mind was Joffrey from Game of Thrones. Yes, everybody hates yeah. Joffrey, and but that's, that's good. Right. That's, that's that the was point. the goal. That was the point. And he's a great villain. But I mean, you hate him. Uh, what I love about Joffrey the most is that it's one of those scenarios where it's like, and I, I thought about this one. South Park kind of first came out and people were talking about South Park and how the kids were talking. And I remember thinking, well, that's just how fucking kids talk. Like, I mean, when kids are not around adults, they fucking swear and they talk about the things that they don't talk about around their parents. I mean, like, look at us right now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So we never grew out of that. Uh, But I guess my point is like Joffrey is perfect because it's like, this is how I think a spoiled kid would act in, in this scenario where it's like, Oh, I'm going to be King. All right, well fine. Let's start killing some wolves. Although my favorite blatantly, blatantly evil villain in game of Thrones is probably, um, the, the Bolton bastard, like Ramsey Bolton. Oh, the, the, the one who, uh, tortures, Torture's Theon. You, you took off your headphones like you oh, can't yeah. hear us Nicole, talking to no Peter. Spoilers. Uh, th- that's where we are. And in, in, like we're watching through season three, I think, right now. Yeah. So that's where we are. It's not a spoiler. I don't uh, know who that's who that was, For us. Though. For us. Maybe somebody <laughs> t- doing uh, <laughs> listening on Tapog Nation. It is a spoiler, but not for us. Um, 
I am at 5% battery power on the MacBook. All right. So, okay. uh, just uh, real quick, the... Nope. The, <laughs> so we're about to lose everything we recorded. We need to wrap it up right now. The, the, the video game, uh, the second part of the question is the video game characters. Yes. Um, uh, Suikoden 3 does a great job of uh, letting you play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you, it's the secret ending. You have to uh, get all 108 characters, all that. To, but uh, you get to play through the villain side of the story, mm-hmm. uh, fight the battles as the villains, that sort of thing. So it's really cool to see it from that perspective. Of course, there's a lot in the Suikoden series. There's no black and white. The villains are kind of gray. You know, They all have... Uh, their own justified reasons. Okay, I'm gonna shut up. Everybody's everybody's <laughs> I'm doing staring, a little I'm staring thing. intently at the percentage. I think it actually shuts down at three percent. So okay, we, okay, we got two percent to get. No, we're, we're good. So I'm not gonna put a party together. Scars in it. Just <laughs> deal with that. <laughs> thanks for thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, and eventually Stitcher as we had more episodes on. Uh, you know what we really like? <laughs> no, no, we're other way, other way around. Okay. We're on iTunes and Stitcher. We have <laughs> we some. We don't have time for corrections. Yeah. Just finish. <laughs> Uh, I think you, let's just let's just put, press stop and people will just assume that the battery died. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to do this. We like five star iTunes reviews. Leave us one. Uh, put a game or a host on it, and we'll get to it eventually. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we're gonna be back. We're gonna be talking about some stuff, some Wednesday stuff. So get ready for that. We are at four mm. percent. So until then, you can find us on. Uh, tadpog.com that's where the show notes live you can find us on facebook.com slash tadpog a lot of cool people there doing a lot of cool shit Tyler and normally make an episode post that's like a really good place to like tell us mm-hmm, how you feel mm-hmm. um, and Fish Lift Shea it's a really good place to let us know how uh, whether it was the quiz that sucked or that whole episode that sucked or wait actually I take it back go back to that episode post and post in that one yeah. you can find us on Twitter we are at tadpog underscore podcast it's cumbersome I realize Thank you for everybody who is retweeting, uh, particularly our episode posts, and um, who are people who are just tweeting to us. Nicole, you're definitely included in there. Thank you. I know I got to see a a wonderful uh, interaction between you and uh, Chandra, Mm -hmm. Soul Sisters. Yep. So that was, I love that. That was beautiful. Um, I know, Josh, you're pointing at the percentage. I know. (laughs) Um, you can call us if you want. If you want to be one of the great people who calls um, and talks to us, you can do that at 270 Eight eight three two five five five. Moves. Took more drift. <laughs> Link to that track in the show notes at tabbog.com. So, well, classic hobo. Uh, let's get classy hobo. <laughs> <laughs> classy. No, there we go, classy hobo. Okay. So until next time, a tropical Capricorn. <laughs> All right, I just did Mr. Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pretty classy hobo. I'm going to eat everything you love. (laughs) There's your stinger.